Hello there, I'm the Base Manager and welcome to a tutorial slash design showcase for oxygen not included. Today I bring to you the nuclear reactor design that we came up during our playthrough. So let's get started. First let's talk about the pros and cons of choosing this design. One of the major advantages of this design is the fact that it can be modular, which means it can adapt to your needs. For example, this is the hybrid version of the nuclear reactor design. Why? Because it produces both power and rad bolts. You can use these rad bolts to fuel up any machinery that you feel like it. For example, diamond presses, um, material research benches and other things that might use rad bolts. However, if you don't want to waste this power because Red Bull generation is expensive on the power, you can just ignore this step and you even gonna have more room for more nuclear storage or simply just more room in your base. Now, another advantage is the fact that this reactor is relatively easy to build. No big tricks are necessary in here. You just need to uh, create a big square, vacuum it out and then start building. And finally, the final advantage is the fact that it is relatively cheap. Um, relatively being the, uh, the word, because you are going to require some advanced materials. But um, luckily, I don't think we need a lot. Now, those materials that I mentioned are actually one of the cons as well. Because you are going to need super coolant to make sure that the entire reactor remains stable. So you can only build this one after you have gone into space and acquire some fluorine. Also, this reactor has a, a relatively low power output. And I say relatively because the output of this power generate of this uh, nuclear re uh, reactor, if all of these steam turbines have the engines tune up, um, done to them, it will generate approximately 7.5 megawatts of power. Um, and that is just counting these six reactors. The seventh reactor is for the cooling loop. If it has an engine an, an engineer tune-up, it will produce as much power as it consumes, so this part can be ignored out of the equation. So, with that out of the way, let's talk about all the materials that you need to accumulate before you start thinking about building this. The most accessible material to have is ceramic. You're going to need a lot of ceramic uh, to build this uh, because there are a few pipes that are exposed to high temperatures and you'll want to have uh, ceramic to protect the fluids. Then you're going to need some refined metals to build radiant pipes with. I would advise you to build the radiant pipes out of aluminum, but copper is just fine. And then you are going to require at least steel. If you have thermium, it will be better, better but steel is also good enough. So uh, after all of those uh, materials have been uh, gathered, the rest can be built out of easily accessible materials. So, with the materials out of the way, let's talk about the piping system. The piping is... Okay, the piping is um, really important to get right, uh, because it regulates a lot of things within the reactor itself. So, let's take a look at this gigantic amalgamation that we have right on top of us. What we can see in here is actually a gigantic cooling loop that we have. Um, the way this cooling loop is built is so that uh, all of the outside of the nuclear power plant gets cooled off first uh, and then the fluid will travel towards the um, oops towards the steam turbines uh, over here. The reason for that is because we want the steam turbines to be uh, cooled off last because they are going to produce heat and we don't want that heat to spread across the base. So. Taking one final look, we can see that uh, if the cooling loop starts from the deposit over here, where the cooling loop, where the super coolant is going to be stored, it is uh, sent through a pipe that uh, has a uh, thermal sensor in it that regulates 
the cooling loop itself. Usually I like to put this temperature at around 25 degrees, you know, living temperature for our loops because they are going to exchange uh, suits over here and we don't want them to be uncomfortable now, do we? And the cooling loop goes from here all the way down and starts cooling off this area and then moves up to the airlock and then finally to the uh, steam turbine rooms. Now, in here we have radiant pipe because we have an opening in our insulation. Reason for that is because we want to have red bolts being produced, right? And the red bolts need to travel through, okay? Now, I know that the, the devs gave us this, but don't use it. Serious, don't, don't use it. Okay? It's made out of plastic. It's going to melt. So, uh, yeah. You can use uh, several liquids over here. I like to use petroleum because it's more easily available. Some people like to use naphtha because naphtha has a good insulating properties. But uh, in order for you to get naphtha, you need to melt plastic. And, uh, you know, if you don't want to go through that effort, just use petroleum or oil. The boiling point is high enough that it won't become a problem. Okay, so more than the cooling loop, the pipes also comprehend a couple extra things. One of them is the waste um, transport and storage. The nuclear reactor produces nuclear waste. Go figure, right? That nuclear waste, it is useful at first, but we don't want it to accumulate too much. That's why we have two separate uh, waste chambers. The first chamber comes directly from our centrifuges over here because the centrifuges produce deplete uranium uh, on its liquid form. Very hot. We don't want to handle it. So uh, we will send it into its own storage. And by the way, it is a minuscule amount, so this storage will last you a very long time. Then we have our nuclear waste storage. Nu the nuclear waste is um, regulated by an automation uh, system that we are going to take a look in a little while but uh, let's just uh, take a look at the piping first we have a pump over here that is turned off uh, but the, if we turn on the pump the pump will send the nuclear waste via this pipe to the other edge of the nuclear reactor this is important to balance the temperature within the reactor itself so um, yeah we need this however as I said we don't want to keep all the nuclear waste around. Eventually, it is going to fill up this uh, small pool that we have over here, and we want to send it into its proper storage. That's why we have this uh, liquid shutoff right here. And before we speak about the automation that regulates this uh, area of the map, let's just finish with the pipes first. So, we have... Let me just get rid of that, because it's a... Yeah, dupes, go uh, take care of that. So, we have the uh, final uh, piping, which is for the water uh, system within the reactor itself. So, we all know that uh, steam generators gener uh, turn steam into water. Uh, each water pipe can hold up to 10 kilograms of water within one tile. Each generator produces two kilos of water, so you can have five generators in its in in one uh, water line. However, if you want to have more, you need a secondary line. Okay, so this main water line that we have, that is going to have the ten kilograms of water, is going to be um, used for two things. First, it is going to refuel the uh, research reactor with more water. We can never stop giving water to the reactor once it, it is turned on, otherwise it's going to enter a meltdown state and we don't want that. So the water that it is produced by the steam turbines, it is sent via the first bridge to the research reactor. However, if the research reactor is full, it is going to back up this line and the water will have nowhere to go. And we don't want that. What? I'm explaining something, Inia. Don't you dare pee, Inia. Okay, Lindsay? Damn it. These dupes sometimes, they are so disrespectful. But in any case, we don't want the water to back up in here because that would mean that the steam turbines would stop working, would stop generating power, and that would be bad, uh, because the steam uh, turbines, by converting hot steam into relatively cold water, also uh, regulate the temperature of the um, steam chamber, because the water is then sent into the second bridge, right, and then it is um, 
uh, vented into the steam turbine, regulating its temperature. However, if the steam turbine is filled with water, these two liquid vents will be shut off. And so, we cannot have the water backing up, which means, following the same logic, we have another pipe that comes out from these two chutes, because this is for the main line, this is for the secondary line. If they are both closed, the water will flow into an exhaust vent. And this exhaust vent is really necessary because uh, when we kickstart the reactor, the pressure will not be at uh, the desired level and so some water will need to be um, expelled from the system. Now, that we spoke about the pipes, let's, spoke about, let's speak about the automation. The automation is super, super simple. It's like the simplest thing I have ever built. Uh, in order to regulate the pressure within the steam chamber, we, we need to regulate the water that comes inside of the steam chamber. So, we have this Atmos sensor over here, cranked up to the maximum, which is 20 kilograms, um, to control these uh, liquid vents. If uh, the pressure rises above uh, the these 20 kilograms, it is going to shut off these liquid vents, which will prevent more water from getting inside of the chamber, preventing it from um, overpressurizing the research reactor, which would also be really bad. Then we have a couple of switches over here. These switches are just to control uh, the different systems within the reactor. The first switch controls the liquid pump. As we previously spoke of, this pump is here to um, circulate the nuclear waste within the chamber uh, but because we want to have a pool of water in here we don't want this liquid pump to be turned on immediately so we shut it off with the uh, switch another switch that we need to have is for the auto sweeper now the auto sweeper is the thing that provides fuel uh, to the research reactor if we want to turn off the research reactor for some reason the only way to do so is to starve it of fuel and so with this signal switch, we can do just that. And then, finally, the third switch controls the Red Bull generators because, uh, hey, there is, so mu there is one thing that is called too much of a good thing, right? If you have too many Red Bulls being generated, you are going to start wasting them, and we don't want that now, do we? Finally, in the automation department, we have these three um, monitoring systems. These three systems are very simple. They are comprised of two hydro sensors and a reset memory and a memory toggle um, uh, thingy. This memory toggle will control, uh, in this case, either the liquid shutoff or these two pumps. These two pumps will um, expel uh, the waste once a critical level is reached. Uh, because these are only temporary storages, you should have a, per a more permanent storage somewhere in the map, usually. Uh, what I did in my uh, playthrough is the uh, biome where the um, uranium ore was, because it was still radioactive, or slightly radioactive, I decided to dump a bunch of uh, nuclear waste over there. You know, I was returning what I took from the land. So, you can do that, or you can just, uh, you know, vent it into space and get, get rid of it, or you can do something else with it. It's up to you. But pretty much, the way this works is... We have these two sensors, as we mentioned, the top sensor is the signal sensor. This is the sensor that tells the entire system that it is full, right? So we want to have it above a certain range. Uh, I usually put 500 kilograms because I believe that nuclear waste does not uh, stack up all the way to one ton. So 500 kilograms is a safe value to have. So the top one should be above whatever metric you decide to use, I go for 500. The below, once again, the um, hydro sensor down here, which is the reset uh, sensor, the one that tells the system that uh, all of the nuclear waste or uh, depleted uranium have been um, taken out, um, should be below whatever metric you want to have. Once again, I use 500 kilograms so that uh, we don't have the liquid pump just pumping uh, a few packets of uh, waste. You know, we want to be efficient with our power. The same is applied to here, but in, in here, instead of controlling one liquid pump, we are controlling one liquid shutoff. This liquid shutoff, as we previously mentioned, if it is turned off, the liquid flu the, the waste will flow through this pipe. If it is turned on, the, f the waste will come through here into its proper storage. Just like in, the, in there, 500, 500. 
those are the values that I like to use. They work for me. You can use another other values. It's all about what works for you. And the final thing that we need to look at is the power distribution. Um, I use four uh, large power transformers to distribute the power. One transformer for the airlock, another transformer for the uh, thermo aqua tuner for the cooling loop, and the other two transformers, one for the production room and the second one for the reactor room itself. Um, luckily for us, we are not uh, using the machines all the time, so even though if we had um, these large power transformers completely maxed out, they would be consuming 8 megawatts of power, but that is, that is not the case, so we'll remain power positive even if everything is running at the same time. And finally, there is just one final thing that we need to discuss, which is, which is this rail over here. You don't want your dupes to manually input the fuel into the reactor because that is not um, consistent. The dupes might be asleep, they might be busy. You don't want that. You want a auto sweeper to take care of that for you. And uh, that's why you have this rail. The rail will transport the enriched uranium and uh, the receptacle will hold up to one ton of uh, enriched, uran enriched uranium, which is really nice. So, with all of that said, the most important moment, and the moment where things can go wrong, is when you kickstart this reactor. So, let's do just that. So, first things first. Uh, do you have water inside of your nuclear reactor? It is of the utmost importance because the research reactor expels extremely hot water. It expels water at 500 degrees and your machinery, well, it just can't hold that kind of temperature now, can it? It can't. So this uh, small pool of water over here will tank that temperature for a while and it will make so that the temperature within the steam chamber rises up slowly so that none of your machinery gets uh, overheated. Second thing, make sure that your cooling loop is actually full. So uh, let's do that right now. Let's fill up our cooling loop. Now guys, once your cooling loop is full, uh, you don't want to have a full liquid reservoir of supercoolant. You kind of want to have between 200 to 300 kilos of uh, additional supercoolant, but uh, you don't need more than that. Remember, supercoolant is expensive, right? Especially in survival. <laughs> in here, it's free, but uh, in survival, you have to fight for it. Uh, so maybe, don't waste it all in this one. You're going to need it for other things. 200 to 300 kilograms is just enough uh, backup fuel, uh, super coolant. Uh, so yeah, super coolant loop done. Next thing in line is you need to start adding the ingredients to your research reactor. Now, here's the thing that you need to take into consideration. Okay, you can add if you're if you built your research reactor and it, it is uh, you know turned off, you can add fuel to the research reactor without having it. Uh, starting to go off because there is no water. However, and you need to take this into consideration, if you add, add water into the system and the reactor goes live, you can never, and I mean never, stop providing it with water. Okay? That is important to keep in mind. Why? Because I like to add the fuel first. Because sometimes during the build uh, stage, especially if you are building your second reactor, you will you will have enriched uranium available. And if your dupes are idling, just like uh, these ones are, they will have a tendency of delivering enriched uranium to your research reactor. You might not notice it. Add some water by accident, and have and then have your research reactor go live while your chamber is still not fully built. And that would ju just be terrible now, wouldn't it? So, with that in mind, let's start. So let's imagine that this is your uranium mine, right? Let's allow manual use and let's increase the priority so our dupes go grab the uranium that I already have in store and uh, deliver it over there. So, here we go. You are mining some uranium and you are sending it into your refinement area. Now, there is several ways you can do this. I'd rather use the uranium... Ref um, uranium uh, centrifuges because you can set it 
and forget it. It, requir it requires no dupe interaction, so we can just turn it on and move to other things, right? Uh, you can also use the beta, v beta Bs, but that requires a lot more maintenance, but uh, it's all up to you. How you produce your fuel is up to you, okay? Now that your fuel is produced, you should, you, you should send it to your chamber via the rail system that we built earlier, right? The fuel has been sent and is going to be end up in this conveyor receptacle. Now we can turn on the signal switch for the uh, auto sweeper so that the fuel can start being adding, uh, added up. There we go. See, the fuel was sent, but the temperature is not rising because there is no water. Okay, now that we have the fuel, all that we need is to add the water and the entire system will go live. Now, this is the part that is not so easy, okay? And this part will require a lot of monitoring out of you and I would definitely advise you to install the pliers mod to deal with this part, okay? Because, uh, well, the system has no water in it. We need to provide it water from the outside. This represents your main water tank or your water supply, wherever you feel like your water should come from. This is what that represents, this pipe over here, right? This pipe is disconnected just by one tile over here from the line that provides water to the reactor. And this is going to be our main focus from here on out. Are you ready? I am. Let's go. So, you want to do the following. You want to turn that on. Cut this pipe, at least for now. And wait for the water to be delivered to the research reactor. Now, hopefully I'll be able to catch the first drop. Let me just slow down. Uh, here we go. See? This uh, little bit of water over here, we cannot measure it, but it is at 500 degrees. And as you could see, nothing happened. Our machinery is still intact, so the pool of water has done its magic. Uh, now, if you are in survival, you have to wait for the temperature of the water to slowly rise before you have the steam available to you. But uh, we are in creative, so let's just go over here. Inject a little bit of temperature, there we go. We have a little bit more. Let's speed up this process, because uh, your time is pressure. There we go. We already have some steam being formed. Um, now, and this is really, really, really important, uh, because uh, once your uh, turbines are starting to go live, even though they are not going all at the same time, they are going to start producing the water we spoke earlier, and you don't want your system to back down. So you need to uh, constantly monitor this area over here to certify that this pipe is not blocked with water, uh, but for now we can leave it as is, because some water um, will be drawn from the reactors and some other water will be drawn from your main water supply. As long as we are monitoring this, it should be fine. Now I'm going to use the heat gun over here to turn all of this water into steam, but uh, pretty much you just need to wait for that water to be turned into steam. Uh, let's increase the temperature, let's say 150 degrees, okay? Okay game? Is that fine for you? Let's go. Let's increase the water by 150 degrees. There we go. Okay, maybe I did too much. Uh, oops. I'm still new to the... Uh, <laughs> the uh, creative thing. Uh, I may have... Um, how should I put it? Uh, injected a tad bit too much heat into this. Yeah, I think I melted something. Here we go. Uh, disregard that, you will not have a heat gun to destroy your reactor uh, during uh, survival, like I did. Uh, so, we just increased the temperature of all of this a lot, uh, so we should do something else. What is that? Connecting this. Because the position of these liquid vents is no, is no mere accident. They are here for one purpose, and that purpose is to cool off the materials, uh, the, uh, the um, stuff that we have over here. Because unfortunately this area is going to be rather toasty uh, in comparison to the rest of the um, steam, turbo, uh, steam uh, room, and so you need a little bit of water to be dropped in this area to keep uh, the temperature of your machinery in check. Okay, but once the temperature has reached a certain point and all of your steam turbines are up and rolling, what you need to, go to do is uh, go into your pipe view, disconnect that, 
and from now on the system should be entirely self-sufficient uh, now there might be a few moments where your atmos sensor will uh, go off as we just seen that's because uh, we added a tad bit too much water into this system uh, because uh, you know we were tra having uh, water come in from the outside we had that pool of water it, it is only natural that we have may have a little bit too much water but that's uh, that's okay that's why we have this system any excess water will be um, purged out of the system and eventually the temperature is going to stabilize however and uh, it is really important that uh, while you, the pressure is stabilizing if you decide to go for a closed system like this you need to monitor also the temperature of your machinery over here so far the liquid pump it is within acceptable ranges so i hope that the uh, pressure will drop soon and uh, everything will turn on the way it should be now even though the temperature and pressure is relatively stable you don't want to turn on the liquid pump just yet in order for you to turn on the liquid pump you need to have a nice uh, pool of nuclear waste first and the reason for that is because uh, that water that, that is coming out of those vents may be catched by the liquid pump if you don't have uh, nuclear waste in the way but uh, if you have nuclear waste because it is so hot it is going to turn immediately into steam and it's going to be uh, very difficult for the pump to remove it from here so, a few cycles have passed, and now you have a, a good pool of nuclear waste over here, right? Now the time has come to turn on the final piece of the system. The piece that is going to completely regulate and stabilize everything within this chamber. As you can see, these steam turbines are uh, outputting more power than these ones because the temperature over here is greater. We still haven't reached the maximum capacity that this uh, steam generate this steam... Um, room can reach um, my experience tells me after running uh, this design for uh, hundreds and hundreds of cycles that this, the temperature will stabilize at 230 to 240 degrees but that tends to take a little bit of time because the steam still needs to um, gain slowly but steadily its temperature and one of the ways we can do that is by transferring this extremely hot nuclear waste all the way over here this is going to start uh, eating up the steam over here to the same temperature uh, as we have it over on this side and it's going to make sure that all of the steam turbines are running at full capacity. And there we go, after a little while of waiting the temperature has uh, stabilized, uh, we are above 200 degrees, uh, as I said we should never go above 240, uh, that's the temperature that uh, is going to stay off at, and now we are producing all of that sweet power, look at that, 1.28 kilowatts, not megawatts, um, that each steam turbine is producing, and that is just fan-freaking-tastic guys. So, I think this is going to be it. Um, like I said, guys, I have run this generator for hundreds of cycles. I ra never ran into any issues with it. Uh, eventually, I would advise you to um, replace the steel things that you, ha that you have inside of your generator uh, for thermium, if you have access to it. If you don't have access to it, just leave it be. Your second reactor can be made out of thermium. The steel will hold on just fine. Don't worry about it. And, um, yeah. So, uh, now, let's just uh, do a final analysis uh, on this uh, reactor. Let's cut some fat. Let's uh, just call it like that, because, uh, you know, this is the uh, medium version uh, of it. It's not the deluxe, but it's also not the uh, base module, right? In here, we have our airlock. I, bu I built this more, you know, out of... Uh, you know, for, for us to use the lead suit docks, because truth be told, the radiation in here, it's not that serious. It's not that serious. You, you can see in there, barely safe. Your dupes will not spend a lot of time over here. They will not absorb a lot of radiation. If they are using their regular atmo suit, it's going to be just fine. Especially if you don't uh, intend on uh, accessing the uh, steam chamber then uh, you don't need this. I would still build this because, you know, it looks nice, but uh, you don't need it. So, if you want, this part can be removed, and then if you want to just generate power, 
you don't need the uh, Red Bull generators, you can also remove just this part of IKEA, which means that your generator would be this size. You can even co so pretty much you can compress it uh, to a tiny, tiny size. It's pretty much nothing really, and uh, in my opinion, this is one of the greatest advantages of this design: is the fact that it can change to suit your needs, whatever those needs might be. If you want. Um, you know, to know more about this particular design, I would recommend you to go and watch my uh, playthrough for Oxygen Are Included, where we built uh, two of these reactors over a long period of time, because, uh, believe it or not, dupes like to take their time building stuff. And with all of that said, guys, I hope that you have enjoyed this tutorial, and that uh, you have found something useful in it. Uh, if there is anything else that you wish uh, to know about this design, please leave a comment down below. I will do my best to try and answer them, uh, your questions. But uh, with all of that said, this is the Base Manager signing out. Bye-bye. Mm.